we're forecasting a, a pickup in growth in emerging markets in 2017. Uh, however, of course, the uh, outlook from the returns perspective could be influenced by what's happening in the United States, uh, given that interest rates started to move upward, uh, and that could really put pressure in terms of uh, real returns. So we're looking at uh, um, low single-digit returns from emerging markets, um, uh, give or take, uh, so that, that uh, is about the external debt, and we believe that we're probably going to see a flat uh, performance in terms of uh, our local currency. Are they going to be broadly the same in terms of performance? Uh, we still have preference for government debt next year. Uh, we believe that there's a little bit of inertia in terms of um, growth that's still going to put pressure on corporates. Uh, higher refinancing rates probably something that we need to be uh, aware of in 2017 and 2018. Um, uh, so uh, we're also looking at the higher default rates that we're forecasting for corporates uh, compared to sovereigns. So therefore our preference is with uh, sovereign debt. Well, we're all used to watch uh, monetary policy of the U.S. being so important for us. Now we're starting to see shifts in fiscal policy, in foreign policy, and potentially also in trade policy. That could potentially have a negative impact on emerging markets in the long run. Uh, however, of course, we need to see how, um, how uh, urgent those changes would be and what shape they will take. So overall, we are going to be monitoring those changes and uh, readjusting our positioning according to that. Uh, we still see the opportunity to grow in Asia as being very, very strong and the structural reforms that we've seen in countries like India, even in China, are still supporting a very uh, good growth story there. Uh, we're seeing more volatility in Latin America uh, as we're seeing an impact of uh, lower commodity prices potentially, especially metals, at least initially. Uh, and we're also looking uh, very carefully at the negative uh, credit re-rating cycle uh, in uh, uh, Eastern European markets, uh, and also which will also be affected by uh, political uh, volatility in Europe uh, itself. So we prefer Asia. We've seen uh, some investors getting worried uh, as we see the 20% growth in leverage levels just to sustain that level of growth. Uh, we're looking for uh, some more structural reforms, uh, especially in SOEs, uh, something that has not really happened yet. Uh, and we're probably going to see a bit of a slowdown, a, a pause uh, in that structural reform uh, drive, given that there's a beginning uh, of the uh, political succession uh, in, in China. So therefore, uh, Chinese um, growth uh, may uh, underperform somewhat, but we still see a very healthy overall picture and more stable comparative to other uh, spaces uh, in emerging markets. Although we see a pickup in growth in the emerging world, uh, the differential between demer emerging markets and developed markets is still shrinking, uh, especially if we're looking at the prospects of higher U.S. growth next year. Um, and we're seeing also lower productivity growth in emerging worlds uh, going forward. Uh, that means that the currencies probably are not going to be uh, appreciating strongly against U.S. dollars. So we're moving into a strong dollar world. Uh, if the uh, reforms in the U.S. are going to take place. And therefore, there's probably a little bit of upside uh, in dollar versus, uh, versus emerging currencies. So we will be uh, very cautiously uh, uh, positioned uh, in local currencies this year.